Hi everyone, I'm Chris Holbert and welcome to my screencast that flows through the Swift Education curriculum. Today we'll be going through lesson five in the series on how to make a clock app and today we'll be going through NS timers. To find it, go to swifteducation.github.io which will take you to this website. You click on teaching app development, scroll down to level two and click on the click clock link And today we'll be doing lesson five. So you want to download the project and um, great. Right now I'll go through the run loops and NS timer presentation and explain how all that works. Okay, here we are. So iOS has this concept called run loops and NS timer. Now run loops uh, used to be called game loops or event loops. They're a very popular way of um, keeping apps running that need to respond to user input as well as continually do things. They were pioneered in the oh, 80s and 90s I guess with uh, with early gaming apps and indeed Windows runs based on run loops, the older versions of Windows. So apps wait a lot. They sit around waiting for you to tap or swipe or pinch or interact with them in any way and there's this run loop that just sits and loops away waiting for input or pausing if there's nothing to do. Now we want our interface to always be responsive. So as soon as you tap, a task begins, does some stuff and then it completes. Now NS timer is quite helpful. What NS timer does is schedule things to happen on the run loop and say so you can say they will happen every 10 seconds or whatever. And the run loop, which is sitting there, looping away, waiting for things to happen, waiting for taps, is also waiting for timer events. That's one of the things it waits for. And whenever a timer event is scheduled and happens, the run loop will fire off whatever the event needs to, needs to execute. And this is how you basically use it. You call the NS timer class, you call schedule timer with time interval, that creates a timer that is scheduled on the run loop and ready to go. Here's the interval for how often it will run. The target, this is who it will, which object it will notify when the timer fires. The selector is the name of the function that will get run. User info is some information that you can associate with that timer that will get sent to the selector. And repeats is a boolean that lets you say whether or not the timer is going to continually run. Okay, let's get into the code. Great, here we can see we've got a got an app that displays the time as, as we left off at the last. So the biggest problem with the app so far is that it only note updates the clock whenever you close and reopen the app or take it to the background and re-foreground it. If you leave the app running, the time won't update. So let's deal with this problem using a timer. Firstly, let's add a timer to the view controller class. So here we go in the project navigator. Here's our view controller. Now let's create a new variable for a timer. Now this variable question mark here indicates that it's an optional. This means that the variable can be nil. If we got rid of the optionality, as you can see the class is now an error. This is because the initializer isn't going to set this timer to something that isn't nil. And because it is not optional, this is an imp impossibility as far as the compiler is concerned. So we need to make it optional, or in the initializer we could set a value here. But optional is what we want for now. All right, let's go into how NS timer works in the documentation. I'll go in via the help menu, or you should probably use Command Shift Zero just to get the hang of the keyboard shortcuts. Okay, NS timer has a few methods that are interesting. There are these ones that create timers. 
and there are these ones that create schedule timers. Now a timer is never going to fire unless it is scheduled on a run loop. So generally you'll use the schedule timer ones. They save you the effort of creating the timer and then scheduling it. They do it, they do it for you in one step. And this version takes an invocation, which is a slightly complicated way of, of handling things. Whereas this is the more normal way to do things. And this takes a target and a selector. The target being the, the class that needs to be told when the timer fires and the selector, selector is the name of the function that gets called. Okay, so let's use a timer. Now currently we're using notification sender to listen to whenever the app comes into the foreground. Let's get rid of that and replace it with using the timer. Let's run this every second. The target will be self. The selector will be update time label. That's the function that we want to get called every second. We don't really have any user information we want to associate with this timer. And we definitely want it to repeat. Now, to make it obvious that this is working, let's change the time style to something a little more lengthy. All right, let's run this. Great, you can see the time updating every second. We've also got a bit of uh, extra noise here that we don't really want, but that uh, just came for free with that time style that we went for. But the main point is that you can see it updating every second. Now what we need to do is clean up this timer. When the view controller finishes, we need the timer to be removed. Now currently, the NS Notification Center is being removed in the DNet, but because we're not using the NS Notification Center anymore, this isn't an issue. We don't need that. However, we need to remove the timer. So to do that, we ask the timer to invalidate itself. And we can run this again. And things are still working. That's fantastic. All right, thanks for watching.